Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at Unit 5, Lesson 7, and we're going to see if we can solve some quadratic equations, which will be trig equations. Um, so a couple things that we want to know is that many of these will have multiple solutions in between the range of 0 to 2 pi. Um, we can factor trig quadratics, and then we will solve the remaining two binomials, which will be linear trig equations. And in cases where we can't factor, we're actually going to use the quadratic formula and then solve from there. So a couple other things that we might need. So think about Pythagorean identity, the special triangles, compound angle and double angle formulas. Um, and we're going to make sure that we use that trig identities page that we've been working with as we solve this. All right, so I've got my trig identities all ready to go. If we need to look at them, we can. Uh, but let's start with a simple version of this. Um, this one is already factored for us. So this is a trig quadratic um, in factored form. So what we'll have is two linear trig equations being multiplied by one another. And whenever we solve something like this, I want to think about like, if we were to have something like these binomials set equal to zero, how we would solve these? Well, we would take each piece typically and we would set it equal to zero. And then we would wanna move these over to the other side to get what these are equal to. So similar to how we would do something like this, I'm gonna do the same thing with a trig quadratic. So we set each binomial equal to zero because if I have something times something else, I know one of those somethings or both of those somethings could equal zero to make this true. Um, and we don't need this, let's just erase that. Uh, and then this one, I would also set equal to zero. And we'll solve each of these by moving the constant over to the other side and then solving the resulting trig expression. So same thing over here. We're gonna move this over, we'll get negative half, and we'll solve the resulting expression. So we've solved, solved expressions like these before. We know how to do this. So we're gonna go through that usual decision-making process. So for this one, can we use a graph to solve this one? Is it sine or cosine? That would be a yes. Is the sine or cosine equal to one, zero, or negative one? And that would also be a yes. So we can use the graph to solve this, which we are going to do. So let's just sketch out the graph of sine here quickly. Here's our graph of sine, and I'm really interested in this point right here where sine is equal to one. So and that actually happens at pi over two. So here is my solution for x. x will equal pi over 2 when sine x equals 1. Okay, so that first part is done. That's going to be one possible solution. There's only one of these solutions in between 0 and 2 pi because I only hit the maximum, which is 1, once. Sometimes there's more than one answer though, so just keep that in mind. Okay, decision-making process. Can I use a graph for this one? Is it sine or cosine? Yes. Is it equal to 1, 0, or negative 1? That would be a no. Can I use a triangle for this? So ignoring the negative for right now, can I get an opposite over hypotenuse from a special triangle that is 1 over 2? I think that would be a yes for this one. And that's going to come from our pi over 6, pi over 3, special triangle. So let's zoom in over here. We've got our triangle and if this is opposite and this is hypotenuse, we want this to be opposite and this to be hypotenuse because this is sine. So which angle, pi over 6 or pi over 3, would give us an opposite over hypotenuse of one over two. That should be pi over six. So pi over six is going to be our reference angle. And then we're gonna use the cast rule 
to figure out the rest of this. So I'm interested in the quadrants where sine is going to end up giving us a negative. So using cast, I want you to place your angles where sine is negative. Okay, so we should be placing our angles in quadrants three and four. And remember the reference angle is always right inside here. And in our case, that's pi over six. Let's call this x1 and x2. So in order to calculate x1, I want zero to pi plus an extra pi over six. So x1 will be pi pi plus the reference angle. Okay, common denominator, six pi over six plus pi over six gives us seven pi over six radians. Okay, and then for x2, for x2, I want the full rotation of two pi minus this little slice right here. So if I do 2 pi minus pi over 6, my reference angle, I should get that rotation for x, the second x. So I'm going to do 2 pi minus the reference angle, which is pi over 6, and then common denominator and subtract. So 12 pi over 6 minus pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6 radians. All right, so quick check for this. Um, you can sub in 11 pi over six and seven pi over six back into this expression and make sure you get negative half out of that. Um, other check that we might do is I can take each of these answers that I got. So pi over two, I can sub it in for x and x here. And I can check once I do this whole calculation that that is equal to zero. Okay, and then I can also take 7 pi over 6, sub them into both x's, and 11 pi over 6, sub into both x's, and make sure I get 0 equals 0. Okay, the answer should be exactly 0 because we expressed our answers in exact radian form, so no rounding or anything was done. All right, so that's how we're going to solve trig quadratics. For some of these, we may need to factor first. And for others, if I don't have all of one trig ratio, which I need in order to factor, I may need to use some identities along the way. All right, so let's take a look at one that's not factored. I have secant squared minus secant equals 2. And whenever we factor, we typically need one side set equal to 0. So I'm going to start this one just by moving the 2 over. Okay, now this might not look super familiar to us, so I'm going to suggest that we do a little let statement here. I'm going to let, for right now, secant x equal, let's say, y. So I'm going to replace my secant x's with y's, and this is a secant squared, so this will be a y squared. This is a regular secant, so just y for that one, minus 2. I think something like this looks more familiar, right? If I were to try to factor something like this, I'd be looking for two things that multiply to negative two and add to negative one. Okay, think about the numbers. All right, if you said negative two and positive one, you'd be correct. And easy factoring, so coefficient of one on the y squared term means that we can just put these numbers right into the brackets and it will be factored. All right, so if we solve this guy, where is this equal to zero? This will be equal to zero when y is two and when y is negative one. So this isn't fully solved yet though, right? Because we did a let statement. And we always know when we do a let statement, we've got to sub this back in. 
Um, and then we can actually solve for what we're looking for, which is x. So I have two options or two equations that I need to solve. I need to solve where secant x is equal to 2 and where secant x is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to do this one over here. Let's just move that right over. All right, so first things first, whenever I deal with a reciprocal ratio, it's helpful just to put that in terms of the primary ratio that it's connected to. So secant, I'm going to switch this guy to cos because that's the primary ratio that goes with secant. And when I do that, I can't just say cos x equals 2. I must reciprocal the right side. So I'm going to reciprocal 2 over 1, and I'll get 1 over 2 for cos. I'm going to solve that. And I'm also going to do the same thing over here. So think of this as negative 1 over 1. When we reciprocal this, the reciprocal of negative 1 just stays negative 1. So I'm going to also solve that one. Okay, so go through your decision process. Can I use graph for this? Is it sine or cosine? It is now. But is it equal to 1, 0, or negative 1? That one's not, so that would be a no. What about triangle? Can I get an adjacent over hypotenuse of 1 over 2 from a triangle? I think I can. That would be a yes. That comes from the triangle that we actually just used above, which is our pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2 triangle. So here is the question. If this is adjacent and this is hypotenuse, which angle, pi over 6 or pi over 3, is going to make an adjacent of 1 and a hypotenuse of 2? Will it be pi over 6 or pi over 3 to give me an adjacent of 1? Hey, if you said pi over 3, that's adjacent and hypotenuse of pi over 3, then you would be correct. So our reference angle will be pi over 3. Okay, I also want you guys to think about the cast rule for this one. So if we do cast, cos is equal to a positive value here. So where should our angles fall if cosine is equal to a positive value? One and four. Okay, the reference angle is always in between your angle and the closest horizontal. So our reference angle pi over three will be in these interior angles here. Let's call this x1 and x2. All right, so the first one, this actually falls already between 0 and 2 pi. This is the rotation that we need, and we know that this interior angle right here is pi over 3. So that one's already solved for us. We have an x1 of pi over 3 radians. You can double check it in your calculator as well. Check that cos of pi over 3 gives you positive half. It should, if we found the correct thing. And then we need this rotation right here. So I want a full rotation, but minus this little slice right here. So we're going to do, in order to get x2, we're going to do 2 pi minus our reference angle, which will be pi over 3. So 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3 gives us 5 pi over 3. Okay, common denominator and then just add the tops or subtract the tops. So there's our first set of two answers. Um, you can plug them both back in here. Make sure you get positive half out of that. And then we'll go on to solving the second one here. So same decision-making process as usual. Can I use a graph? Well, is it sine or cosine? That would be a yes. Is it equal to 1, 0, or negative 1? That's also a yes. So let's use the graph to solve this. Okay, and this is only one cycle of cosine, so we're only interested in one cycle because the question, um, all of these questions, we're working with where x is between 0 and 2 pi. So only one cycle needed to solve this one. And here's our x values. Okay, 
and this is positive 1 and negative 1. So where is the x value where the y value is 1, negative 1? So at negative 1, x is equal to pi. Okay, you can again test on your calculator, check that if you plug in the cos of pi that it equals negative 1. And that will be our second answer. In between 0 and 2 pi, this only happens once. So in this case, we only have one answer for this one, not two like we had in the first part. All right, so there's our three answers. Let's zoom out to get a full picture of the question. Okay, feel free to pause right now, um, ask each other questions, help each other out if anyone has questions, okay? All right, let's move to the next one. So in both of our examples below, these are not set up perfectly just yet for us to be able to use factoring. Um, we might need to use some trig identities to help. So the goal in a question like this, if I don't see all signs or all tans, but I see like maybe I see a squared term and I see a constant term and I see a, like a linear term um, or exponent one term, um, let's try to make everything all tans or all secants. So look at your sheet. I want you to see if you can find something that either turns secant squared into something to do with tan or switches tan into something to do with secant. Let's see if we can find something. Okay, so looking around here, I know that tan's equal to sine over cos. That doesn't really help me express just in terms of secant. Um, if we keep looking here, I think I can see that secant is actually equal to tan squared plus one. So we are going to actually sub in for secant. We're gonna replace it with tan squared plus one in our question. And when I do that, I'm gonna make sure that I put brackets around because that two needs to be multiplied by both things inside here. And now we have all tangents in our question, which is perfect because I can't factor unless I have all trig ratios that are the same. So let's just expand and simplify first. Okay, I want you to notice as well that I wrote this in descending order. So I wrote with the exponent two, exponent one, and then constant at the end here. And we're gonna do a little let statement. So let's let tan x equal y for now, just to help us with our factoring. So I'll have two y squared plus y minus one equals zero. So when I factor this, this is hard trinomial factoring where a is not equal to one. We need to find two things that multiply to a times c, and they need to add to the b value, which is one. Can we find any two numbers that add to one and multiply to negative two? I think two and one should, uh, two and negative one should work for us. And you're going to factor by grouping. I'm going to do this quickly. So we split y up into the two values. There's lots of other quick ways to factor as well. And then common factor from each. Okay, we've done this. We reviewed this in polynomials as well. We reviewed it back in um, exponentials also. So I'm confident you guys can do stuff like this. All right, so when we go to solve this, I will get y equals negative one. And if I set this equal to zero, I'll move the one over and divide out two and I'll get y equals a half. These aren't my solutions just yet because we made a let statement. So we're gonna now sub that let statement back in. I'm interested in where tan x equals negative one and where tan x equals positive one over two. So that's our goal, that's what we wanna solve. So now that we have that, 
let's start with where tan x equals negative 1. We're going to do our decision process here. So, graph. Is it sin x or cos x? That's already a no. We did graph some positive ones and negative ones when we graphed tan, but uh, I don't think we're as familiar with the graphs of tan um, as we are with sine and cosine. So I'm going to say no, uh, unless you're good friends with the graph of tan. Um, but I think for, most, for the most part, probably we'll continue with the decision process from here. How about triangle? Remember, tan is opposite over adjacent. So can I get an opposite over adjacent of, let's ignore the negative for right now. We'll take care of that with cast rule. Can I get an opposite over adjacent of 1 over 1 from a special triangle? I think we can. We can get a 1 over 1 from the pi over 4, pi over 3 triangle. Or sorry, pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 triangle. Okay, let's zoom in here. So I'm going to have an opposite over adjacent of 1 over 1 when I have pi over 4 as my reference angle. So we're going to use pi over 4 as a reference here. And we're going to use this with the cast rule. So let's draw ourselves a picture. Where would I expect that my angles will fall when tan is negative? Okay, I want you to circle the quadrants and place your angles in there. Think about it for a second. Tan is negative in the sine quadrant and in the cosine quadrant. And my reference angle always goes between my arm and the closest horizontal. So that will fall here and here. Let's call this x1, x2. All right, so let's calculate. So I want pi, but less this slice so that I can get this rotation right here. Okay, so a full rotation of pi minus this little piece, that's gonna give me x1. So pi minus pi over four. Four pi over four minus one pi over four gives me 3 pi over 4. So common denominator, put them together. Okay, x2. I want a full rotation of 2 pi, but less this much. Less the reference angle. So subtract the reference angle to get this rotation. Okay, so we're going to do 2 pi minus reference angle. And that will be 8 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4. That will give us 7 pi over 4 radians. All right, so there are two possibilities right there. I also want to solve my second piece right here, which is where tan is equal to a positive half. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, quickly go through your decision process here. Can I use a graph for this? That would be a no. It's not sine or cos. It's not equal to 1, negative 1, or 0. Can I get an opposite over adjacent of 1 over 2 from a special triangle? Opposite and adjacent. I have 1s and 2s in special triangles, but I don't think I have an opposite or an adjacent that could give me a 1 over 2 in a special triangle. So that would be a no. So we're going to go calculator on this one. And let's use our graph. So just draw yourself a quick picture here. And I want to place the angle where tan is positive. Okay, tan is equal to positive half here. All 
All right, so we should place our angle, angles, I should say, in quadrants four and two. Sorry, where tan is positive, not where tan is negative, in quadrants one and three. All right, so our reference angle will be inside here and inside here. Sorry guys, I've got a cat that really wants to be in this video. <laughs> okay, so let's find the reference angle. We're gonna do um, tan inverse of one half. Okay, make sure your calculator's in radian mode. And we're gonna get 0 0.46 uh, let's round that up. 464 radians. I'm going to call this x3 because we already have x1 and x2, so this will be x3 and x option number 4. That's actually one of the answers. It, it is the reference angle and it's also this rotation right inside here. So this is going to be our first answer. And our second answer, we're going to use that reference angle of 0.464. And I'm going to use 0 to pi plus an extra 0 0.464. So pi plus for that one. So x4 will be pi plus the reference angle of 0 0.464. If you still have it in your calculator, you can just add pi right to that. And let's round to the nearest thousandth. Should get 3.605 radians. All right, so there's our four possible options here. Um, remember, we can take these and we can sub them actually right back in here. Um, if we wanna sort of check maybe like an overall thing, I would recommend you sub back each one back in here and make sure you get out zero. These ones should give you exactly zero because we express them as exact answers. These guys right here, because we rounded them, you might be like, ever so slightly off from zero, but it should be very close to zero if we've gotten the correct answers. Okay, so there are all of our possible answers for this question. Okay, last one for today. I want you guys to pause the video and we either need all sines or all cosines in this equation. So let's see if we can find an identity that will help us achieve that. Okay, give the video a quick pause and then you can play after you guys have had time to think about it. All right, so if you've taken time to think about this um, and you've looked at your identity sheet, you probably would have found that there's nothing that we can really do with sine to change it in terms of cosine but there might be something we can do with cos of 2x in order to change it in terms of sine. So if we look at our identities here, we've got a couple options, but this is the only one that has just sine in it. So I say we go for the third option, one minus two sine squared. So I'm gonna replace that in here in brackets, one minus two sine squared. And we're going to just expand and simplify here. So bring your 3 in. And whenever I solve trig quadratics or even regular quadratics, I usually like my squared term to be positive. And part of the reason for this is, is that if I have to factor, then I don't have to common factor out a negative before I start factoring. Um, and if we put it in quadratic formula, if we have to do that, um, I think it's usually just easier to have a positive a value. Um, I mean, you could do it either way, but factoring especially, we want that a value to be positive. So I think instead of moving the two over this way, I'm going to move everything else over to the right. So that will be positive sine squared x, 6 sine squared x, negative 3 sine x, and a negative 3. And I'm going to gather these constants as well. So I'll get positive 6 sine squared minus 3 sine x minus 1. Okay, let's do a little let statement. 
now that we have this in all signs, a nice descending order with exponents um, and then the constant at the end. So let's let sine x equal y. So I'll have 6y squared minus 3y minus 1. If I go to factor something like this, I'm looking for a times c, this is hard trinomial factoring. So are there any values that add to negative 6, or sorry, add to negative 3 and multiply to uh, negative 6? Okay, not too many options here, negative 1 and 6. 1 and negative 6, negative 3 and 2, 2 and negative 3. I don't think any of those will work for us. So if we can't factor, we will go quadratic formula. Okay? And if I do quadratic formula, a is 6, b is negative 3, and c is negative 1. So let's sub that into quadratic formula to solve. Just as a reminder, we are solving for y here. So y will be equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Uh, and then I'll start plugging in. Okay, um, negatives in brackets, especially when you're squaring, that's important. Okay, so we'll just simplify this quickly here. We're going to get 3 plus or minus. This is 9 plus 24 over 2 times 6. So our options are we can have the plus option or the minus option for y. Okay, so plus option. Let's calculate this quickly on our calculators. Um, you can also leave it as an exact value, but I think it's helpful, especially when we're doing like cast rule and all of that kind of stuff. It's helpful for us to just know approximately what that's equal to anyways. So for the first one, I'm getting 0 0.7287. And the minus option. Okay, so plug into your calculator, 3 minus root 33. Make sure that all gets divided by 12. So press equal on your calculator, then divide by 12. And we should be getting negative 0 0.2287. Okay, so we've solved the quadratic. Now we need to solve this little let statement here. Okay, so let's start with where y equals 0 0.7287. Okay, so option one is that y or sine x with our let statement is equal to 0 0.7287. The second option down here will be that sine is equal to negative 0 0.2287. So we'll solve that one in a second. Okay, I think we can pretty clearly see from our process here, graph is not going to work for us. Triangle is not going to work for us. We'll go calculator for this one. Okay, so picture of the cast rule. I want to place my angles in the proper quadrants here. Actually, I'm going to move this over a tiny bit. Okay. So where would I expect my angles to fall if sine is equal to a positive value? I believe that happens in all and sine. So you're gonna place your two angles in there. We can zoom in a little bit here too. And we're gonna start, we can find the all quadrant one by just doing sine inverse. We'll call that x number one. Let's do uh, let's say x1 equals sine inverse of our decimal. If you have it in your calculator, you can even just do sine inverse right in your calculator there. And that should give us this first rotation. 
We'll also use this as a reference angle. So sine inverse of 0 0.7287 gives us a radian value of 0 0.816 radians. That's an angle. That's this rotation right here. And because this is an acute angle, it's between 0 and pi over 2, we use that as our reference angle for over here. Okay, so here's what I want. If this is 0 0.816 radians, I want this rotation, which will be pi minus this little slice right here. And we'll call that x2. So x2 we can calculate by doing pi minus the reference angle. So you can, if you have that reference angle still in your calculator, you can just do pi minus answer. Keep all those decimals there, and you should get 2.325 radians. Okay, you can check these. You can sub these both back in. Make sure you get out 0 0.7287 once you plug those in for sign. Okay, second part here, we want to solve for where sine is equal to negative 0 0.2287. So again, process here, are we going to use a graph? It's sine, but it's not equal to negative 1, 0, or 1, so that's a no. Calcul uh, triangle, I don't think so, it's a decimal, so we're going to go calculator. I hope you guys appreciate just this beautiful art right here. So good. All right, so cast rule. We wanna place our angle where sine will be negative. So take a moment, think about the quadrants where our answer should be. Okay, we're gonna get answers in the tan and cosine quadrants where these in between the horizontals will be our reference angles. Okay, my preference for solving these questions when we have a negative ratio is you can easily find your reference angle by doing the inverse of the positive ratio. Um, and then you don't have to deal with any like negative angles or finding an angle that's obtuse and then having to try to find the acute angle. So that would be my preference. Um, there are other ways to do it too, but I suggest let's find the reference angle by doing sine inverse of the positive. And what's that, what that's going to give me is it will give me the related acute angle in the all quadrant that I can use to find the negative angles in these two bottom quadrants here. Okay, so let's do sine inverse of the positive version of this. I'm getting about 0 0.231 radians. And that's not an answer. Remember, that's just my reference angle. So that is the radian value in between here. So here and here. Okay, so this is going to be x3 because we already have an x1 and x2 and this one will be x4. So I want 0 to pi plus an extra bit of that reference angle which is 0 0.231. So x3 pi plus the reference. Okay, if you still have it in your calculator just add pi to it. 3.372 radians. Awesome. And last one, I want a full rotation around, but I want less 0 0.231 radians than that to get this nice little rotation in here. All right, so pi uh, x4 we'll find by doing 2 pi minus that reference angle. Okay, so 2 times pi on your calculator minus 0 0.231 gives us about 6.052 radians. Okay, quick check to make sure you found the right angle, the correct angles, plug back in for x here, 
make sure you get out negative 0 0.2286. Remember, this one's not an answer. It's just a reference angle. Um, final check here, guys, I would do, so you take each answer here and plug them in individually right back into this equation. So when you plug them in for 2x, you're going to multiply them by 2 and take the cos of that answer. Um, but literally, I would plug each one of those in and make sure you get something very, very close to 2 on your left-hand side here to double-check your answers, okay? Um, I should know at the end of this whether I have my answers right or wrong, and then that will help me assess whether I need to do further work on this question or go back and check my work um, from there, okay? Guys, make sure you take some time. Um, if you need to, you can go back to any parts of this video, help each other out, um, and uh, focus on your work. Make sure that you utilize your time well today, okay, to do your practice questions.